Hello and uh, welcome to this uh, special broadcast where we are going to be looking at the state of healthcare in the country. An update on uh, the latest interventions by the Ministry of Health on a range of issues including the National Day of uh, Physical Activity, something that is uh, very, very important, especially when it comes to the workings of the greater faculties of your body. Many times those who are not fit tend to have a little bit of trouble to think properly. It means those that adhere to a physical fitness regime uh, can well be on their way to being mentally fit and be able to think straight. Whether it will achieve what it wants to achieve in terms of a campaign uh, set out by the Ministry remains to be seen. We shall be having an update on the details of that from the Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Health, Dr. Diana Atrine. But before Diana Atrine joins us, let me just uh, take you, give you a little bit of detail into the other aspects that we shall be talking about. The TB screening and the treatment campaign across the country, HIV AIDS prevention, and the latest on what is described as the community health strategy. These are all interventions that are ensured at making the average Ugandan from the far-flung areas to the public and urban centers healthy and fit. Now, joining us for the discussion, as I said earlier, is the Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Health, Dr. Diana Atrine. Doctor, welcome to the program. Thank you very much and thank you for having me. First things first, it is uh, Budget Week and uh, many Ugandans are awaiting what is entailed in it, especially with regard to health care. The allocation of money that will for the next financial year cater for the issues that are pain points within the sector. Could you give us an update of what amount of allocation the budget for the financial year 2023-2024 has for the health care sector? Um. Thank you very much. As you know, on Thursday we are having our budget uh, day, and I do believe the Minister of Finance will take us through the details. I would not want really to preempt um, what the Minister is going to present, but I know that um, you have accessed um, uh, that information. But, but I, I, I must say that uh, looking at um, our last budget and now there has been some 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 bit of increment but as you know the our b budget process focus on 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 it focuses on five key areas uh, the human resource infrastructure um, medicines and supplies um, regulation and, and 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 also other aspects of, of governance but I, I must say that even when you look at the medicine budget, when you look at, at, at infrastructure that we are going to do, um, th there has been some, some increment. I, I wouldn't want us to give you the figure because I know that the um, Minister of Finance is going to take us through that. And um, I think let's wait. Um, when we are through with that, then we are going to now delve into the details of what we are going to do. All right, many would expect the budget uh, to, for example, give a clean bill of health to yes. the sector, but we come on the backdrop of a series of challenges that yes. have been persistent. And, uh, for example, the strikes by senior house officers, and then the strike by uh, interns. And then before we came to terms with that, pre-interns were also asking to be deployed. Mm -hmm. What is the latest on their deployment? Uh, the, the interns, um, we are still in the discussion with the uh, Minister of Finance uh, because, as you know, over time the numbers have increased. That's right. And therefore, the budget kept on swelling. And finance at one time said it could not raise money that, that has that elastic kind of nature, and they needed us to to communicate that finance will not be able to, 
to finance this function. Um, but we've continued to engage them because I, I think an intern, when he's working in a hospital, uh, we need w lunch, we need um, even where to hire, where to sleep, to, 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 get to, to rent where, the, you know, to sleep. And because now, because of the numbers, we cannot accommodate everyone at, at the hospital. Yet some of these uh, doctors work up to late. So it is, it is really necessary that they, they, they get um, the support. However, as you know, Minister of Health cannot be, um, cannot deploy these young health professionals without knowing exactly how they are going to, to, to manage their, their internship. Um, some, some time ago, some like, like two weeks ago, some, some parents came here and said, okay, as you are waiting to, 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 to deploy your people, why don't you allow us, do you know, at least who can support, deploy after all, when the money comes, they, they, they can be paid their arrears. But I think that one did not, they, they didn't like that. They said, uh, although, although quite many uh, have come up and, and asked, we have got, I think, applications about over 300 people. They want to be deployed and start working. At their cost. At their own cost. Um, but we still have hope that we continue um, engaging finance yesterday. I was able to talk to the PSST. Uh, they are still in discussion. I think tomorrow I'm going to follow up. Before the budget, we will know what, what, what really needs to be done. So until then, that's when I can know. Um, but our stand here is that the interns, such as our older doctors, they are working also there. But but they, they have, you know, they, they are more, they are less vulnerable than the, the interns. They've been in the system. Yes, supply. yes. Okay. Some even are working. Uh, they are earning their salary. They, they, they came to do masters, but when they are on study leave. Okay. Yeah. Yesterday, NTV ran a story mm. about uh, non-payment of salaries to staff and uh, medics mostly at Kauru Hospital. What is the latest on that? I, I don't have that detail. I was also told, I didn't watch, um, but the districts are separate entities. They get their monies directly from finance. So if they had challenges of wage bill, uh, but I had also finance released supplementary, uh, to the districts that had uh, the wage shortfall, uh, I believe that that will be sorted um, before the end of this month because I heard that the, the, the money was released to the districts. But I don't have the detail because I, di I didn't know about it because, you know, the, the districts manage their money separately from, from the Ministry of Health, so I don't know. Okay. Mm. All right, that will serve as uh, our preamble. Mm. as we get into the detail of this uh, discussion on the state of affairs within uh, the ministry's uh, campaigns to mm. ensure improvements, especially of uh, health of Ugandans and the health infrastructure. The National Day of Physical Activity is one that is designed to galvanize and mobilize Ugandans into mm. giving greater attention to physical fitness mm. because of the attendant uh, risks that come if you are not physically fit. Mm. Tell us about that particular campaign, but also highlight on the real dangers so that the average Ugandan can understand mm. the lack of physical fitness regimes in your life that can directly affect you in ways that many might not be actually aware of. As, as you all know, uh, we are beginning to see now the curve for non-communicable diseases go up while the infections, apart from the recent epidemics, 
but basically the infectious diseases were coming down. But we are seeing more numbers every day increase. Um, every time you have increased life expectancy, because as, as you know, you know you, 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 Uganda life expectancy has now uh, improved. So we, ha we are going to have more old people. That comes along with other non-communicable diseases. And some of them include high blood pressure, diabetes, obesity. Obesity is a disease, although some uh, in African um, setup, you know, the more you are big, the more you, the you, you, you have a st status. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so obesity, um, high levels of chole ch cholesterol in the blood, the cancers, heart disease, kidney disease, sickle cell. Sickle cell, people forget that it is a serious disease in this country. Um, so all those, all those diseases actually increase, especially the lifestyle um, diseases like hypertension and obesity and high cholesterol levels and, 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 and all those related um, arthritis. You know, when you are big, when you are overweight, the the body st starts failing to you know to hold but you know to to support you sure. and you find that and, 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 and when people get to 60s and 70s they start getting a thread you know those joint problems the bone problems so the only answer to that is to get into a culture of us being active physically. We are not talking about active in mentally, but we are talking about physical fitness. Physical fitness is we want to continue to talk about the importance of people getting into a culture of exercising. You don't have to go to that gym, but you can walk even in the compound of your home, you can you can do a lot of walking, especially in urban areas. When you look at some of those sedentary diseases, the the, the sedentary lifestyle and the associated diseases, many of them is because of that sedentary life. Many years ago, when people had less cars, less motorcycles, and people used to walk they would walk many, many kilometers every day, and that was medicine for them. Right now, everyone gets out of office, gets into the car, goes home, go to the joint, drink alcohol, eat pork, uh, then go and pa pass by these fast food restaurants, they eat those stuff, all that, bring about problems of health. So the physical fitness day on Sunday that we are going to have in Kololo is basically to remind Ugandans that it is very important that they get into the habit of physical fitness because that is investment in your life. When you do physical fitness, you are not just doing it for, for fun, but you are actually investing quality life in, your, in, in, in yourself. You become also physically, but also mentally alert. The, the, there are so many research papers that have been published that when you, are, you exercise, also your body, your mind, your, your, your mental faculty is, 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 is functioning properly. So, but also it delays the complications of these sedentary diseases. Um, if you have high blood pressure and you do exercise and you, you couple it with your diet, you do regular checkup 
I can assure you, you, you live a, a little longer. But many times people come when they are obese, when they have high levels of cholesterol, yeah, then they, they are eating anything, any fat, anything, and then they get problems of the heart, then, the heart, then they have to be in the hospitals. All that has, has the repercussion. So investing in health is not just going for checkup, but also making sure that yeah, you keep your, your body active. Yes. So on Sunday, National Day, Yes. Of physical activity. Are people advised to walk from home to Kololo and then back, or we shall have SUVs bringing people to Kololo uh, and do a little uh, bit of walking uh, around uh, and then get back into the SUVs? No, you can walk. You can walk <laughs> from your home because that's what we are talking about. Yeah. It doesn't even have to be in Kololo that you must all come to Kololo. Oh. But wherever you are, rem re remind yourself and, and be active, walk. But we want just to join together in, in Kololo and, 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 and walk and do physical exercise. We run. We, so that, that alone will, will, um, will rekindle that, that spirit of, of, you know, of rejuvenating our, 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 our health system by becoming active. Okay, mm. let's uh, get the topic down and dusted. Is it going to be a monthly or annual? That, that activity is, is annual, it is the national day, but we encourage that this individual becomes a daily, not a even day. weekly, not monthly, but should be daily activity of your life if you want to be healthy, if you want to be more productive, and if you want to live longer. Okay. Mm. All right, now, Madam Woman Secretary, the specter of uh, malaria across the country is still one that is worrying many mm. people, especially when you consider the fact that uh, access to medicines is also a problem. There have been many interventions from government, including the distribution of nets, mm. and then uh, there was a controversial campaign sometime back in, for those that have been around for a while, DDT and the spraying of uh, bushes in order to curb the spray and of course uh, lessen the death that comes as a result of malaria. The current distribution campaign, uh, give us an update on how it's going, especially in terms of uh, effectiveness, and also address the challenges that have been reported with some communities uh, choosing to use some of these equipment, including the nets, for other purposes other than sleeping under them. Yeah, at the moment, Ministry of Health is distributing mosquito nets. Um, we do this exercise every two years. And right now, we are distributing in 15 districts. OK, we first began with two. Um, then now we are doing 15, but now we are going to go into waves and we, c we will cover the whole country. Malaria remain, remains the biggest killer. It kills more people than even the COVID we had in this country. And it is continuing to kill people. Yet we know the cause and we can avoid the, the, that malaria if you can avoid the mosquito. It is one of the biggest cause of expend health expenditure in this country. It contributes largely to under five mortality. It contributes largely to women, uh, uh, pregnant women. It is the biggest killer of our people in this country. When you look at our budget in national medical stores, a third of that medicine goes to treat malaria. So malaria is, is not only just a disease, but it is an economic bottleneck. We, we have been talking to the community about malaria, especially for them to know 
how to fight malaria by avoiding mosquitoes. How do you avoid mosquitoes? Mosquitoes come and bite people at night or in the compound when they are seated outside in the night. Some mos mosquitoes are changing now that their lifestyle, they've learned also that people are, they are devising means to avoid them. They've started biting people during the day. Anopheles mosquito carries that parasite and once it bites you, it puts right that parasite in you and you get malaria. And it is likely that if the mosquitoes come in the house and it bites someone who has malaria and then bites another one, then it will be able to spread and everyone will be sick. The interventions we have been teaching people to apply, the first one is use mosquito net. Because these mosquito nets, we go to household, we give to every household. Every household, if we all used these mosquito nets properly, you get mosquito net, first hang it outside for 24 hours so that the chemical, because these nets, we put chemicals that when you hang it out, when the mosquito comes and lands on that net, it dies, or it is repelled so that it does, but also it creates the physical barrier to, to the mosquito, not to access you. So, if all of us use these mosquito nets properly, because some people say, no, when I sleep in the mosquito net, I suffocate, I, I, it gives me allergy. It can only give you allergy if you don't hang it outside. If you get it from the, from the distributor and put it up there and sleep in it, it can give you that allergy because the fumes will be still in. But if you hang it outside, after 24 hours, I can assure you will not have that problem. So, so we need to use the mosquito nets properly. Secondly, before that second mm, point, mm. for purposes of clarity on mm. the amount of time required for the mosquito net to be spread outside, mm. what are the conditions most suitable for that chemical to be reduced to a level where it's not harmful or can cause allergy? It could be spread when the conditions are cold. Should it be spread when the sun is really hot? It does not matter. You just put it out, the wind blows over it, the, the, those fumes of the chemicals get out, and that's it. It is safe. Um, but we noted that some people misuse those mosquito nets. When we give them, they put them around the, the anthills to catch ants. Yeah, this one I witnessed and I've been telling people, I stopped somewhere in Luero and I found you know, you know um, enaka and enaka. This is one that normally come out at around three, four. Yeah, they were busy catching with using nets. So if we really, really, really make sure that we these mosquito nets are used properly, it can go a long way to help us to prevent the disease. But also in the urban, where people have money. Why not fumigate your house and keep the mosquitoes out of your ha house? Because it is very simple. There are very there there are, there are chemicals that are effective that are on the market. That if you ask any entomologist, we have trained even many many community entomologists or even people to to, to to teach people how to to you know to spray and and, and make sure that their houses are free from mosquitoes. But in addition to that, people need to know that mosquitoes breed in areas where it's dirty, it has water, stagnated water. If each one of us, I have seen even in urban areas, water stagnating and people just leave it like that. If we can drain all that water and make sure that the place is free from this stagnated water, where mosquitoes can come and lay their eggs and within one week they, they, you know the eggs are hatching, then we'll be able to prevent. We are using chemicals to spread 
in the water bodies and, and especially in rural in the districts that are, they, they have high burden of malaria. And we just want the population to embrace it. We went to one of the districts in eastern Uganda where they said that chemical brings bed bugs. They somehow, someone attached, you know, the chemical to bed bugs. We were doing indoor residue spraying. Yeah. I think because of the smell of the, those homes possibly that had bed bugs, when they smelled the, the chemical, they started coming out. And then they said, these people brought bed bugs to, you know, to us. So we continue to demystify, we continue to teach people because this war of malaria, it is, it is a disease of the poor. The countries that have developed, the countries that have made decisions to eliminate this disease on their own and fight on. You talked about DDT. DDT, many countries in the past used it and they eliminated malaria. But here we were, we know environmentalists, blah, 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 blah. Of course, for us, you know, we are all embracing and all, you know, we are very democratic and all that. So we, we, we remain there. Okay. And that but, brings me to the question. Hmm. Uh, perhaps you have the point, just finalize it. Yeah, so we do believe hmm. that as a country, this thing of malaria, is a serious economic problem. And so it cannot be a problem of Minister of Health alone. This, we want to see each agency of government, we want to see local governments, we want to see families, we want to see communities get to say enough is enough with malaria, we all stand up and fight against this disease. I'm glad you talk about uh, the multi-sectoral approach yes. to solving this problem mm. because that is exactly the question I was going to put to you. Mm. Away from appealing to agencies mm. to be part of this fight, mm. there must be a drawn-up plan, especially by the Minister of Health, that can offer the other agencies direction on how to go. For example, you spoke about the fact that uh, a stagnant water points within communities are a breeding ground for mosquitoes. But you could find, for example, that the National Water and Sewerage Corporation is digging up in order to lay new pipes or to rectify those that have passed. Before the National Water gets done, MTN and any other telco, for example, is also digging up and then the water points are increasing in number. Before you know it, KCCA is not in place to work on the garbage and waste management. And then the Ministry of Health is grappling with increasing cases of the disease. Have you provided these agencies and all these actors direction or a way forward? We have actually, uh, through the office of the Prime Minister, and uh, it, it is now mainstreamed in, 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 into our, our programs, uh, all MDAs, uh, malaria is, 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 is mainstream there. The, the issue of, well, I don't buy in that uh, MTA in our national water, when they dig, that is a problem. I think that is just a temporary thing, because that one, once they finish, they cover and uh, But I think it is, the most important thing we need to, to, to focus on is um, community awareness at household level. What are they doing at household level? Each, all of, all of us, at household level, what are we doing to mitigate or to prevent malaria from spreading from one person to, to another? If all of us get to that point of malaria is our biggest enemy, it drains our national economy because the money that we are using to treat malaria all over the country, that money can build uh, five like if, if, if in, 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 in the, in the five-year, we, we can end up actually getting uh, like five-star hospital. Uh, should I call it five-star hospital? But, but we'll be able to, to build 
um, seriously tertiary institutions, heart, heart transplant institutions, kidney transplant institutions. So it, it, is, um, it is a problem. We are still treating, we are still grappling with diseases that we can prevent. Over 75% of these diseases can be prevented. So our emphasis as Minister of Health is not just curative, but also we need to continue drumming the sound of disease prevention and health promotion. That's why we have National Day of Physical Fitness. That's why we are talking about now malaria. We are going out. We, that's why now we are rolling out the, the yellow fever um, vaccination. That's why now the numbers of vaccinatable, of, of, you know, the diseases that we are vaccinating now have moved from 6 to 14. We continue putting so much emphasis on prevention, 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 and educating the people. And then now our focus, we really want to focus at community. Quickly. Even looking at the parish development model that is a very good model that we can hinge in, in, in especially in the component of, 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 of social service. And we have our, our cadres at that level trained, given what they need, they are able to move house to house. If, if a, wom a woman has not attended antenatal, they make sure they encourage that woman to at attend antenatal. If the, the child is not vaccinated, they encourage the, 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 the family to, to get all the children vaccinated. If we find someone, we, we, we test, we check the blood pressure, we test the sugar. Because of so many people walk with these diseases and they don't know. They have hypertension, they don't know because they don't go for checkup. So we think that if we go house to house and check and, and we document and, and profile and then using our information system of community information system, we are able to capture the data of this country. And then it can help us to target where is hypertension most, where is diabetes, where is, why is this population getting more, more hypertension? Why? Then we treat and we prevent more complication because it is very expensive to treat kidney disease after heart, after heart failure or well. diabetes. Madam Permanent Secretary, many thanks for that time now for a short break. But when we return, we shall continue the conversation, especially with a look mm. at uh, something slightly related to malaria, which is hygiene and sanitation, and uh, the national plan for that, of course, including other aspects like TB screening and treatment across the country. You are watching a special program, a look at the state of health, in the country, and we are speaking to the permanent secretary in the Ministry of Health, Dr. Diana Atri. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Hello, welcome back. For those that uh, went with us into the break, you are watching a special program where we're looking at uh, the state of health across the country, and uh, with us is the permanent secretary in the Ministry of Health, Dr. Diana Atri. In this segment, we shall be looking at uh, TB screening and treatment across the country. Tuberculosis is one of uh, the giant disease burdens that the country is grappling with. And many who are suffering from uh, tuberculosis may actually know or even have no idea about what they are suffering from. And that coupling, uh, complicates the process of uh, getting treatment or even the recovery. And that, of course, the permanent secretary earlier told us it impacts on the economy because many are unable to be able to put a hand to work, meaning they are not productive. Allow me to return to the permanent secretary to continue this uh, discussion. When we talked about malaria, mm. we realized that hygiene and sanitation is critical. But hygiene and sanitation is more like something that is personal to hold up. Individuals can be mm. very sensitive about hygiene mm. on their own without necessarily being told. And then there are people within society mm. who do not actually mind whether they are living within confines that are hygienic or sanitation is good. But the other vulnerable communities that are living in slums and 
congested areas. These ones, even if they would love to be very hygienic, the circumstances don't allow them to. What is your take on that? Um, well, um, first of all, I must state first that um, the state or the level of yeah. development of a country is seen or is gauged by the level of the citizens living in an in a hygienic or or, or well well well, well mobilized or well um, what I would say um, clean environment. Clean environment. Yeah. It is true that especially now where we are seeing a lot of uh, urban movement and, and coming to, uh, uh, like in Kampala, we are seeing every day the urbanization effects, including uh, sanitation and, and hygiene challenges. I think what we need to, to emphasize, and today really I want to emphasize this, is that no amount of money, no, no amount of money will create a clean environment. No amount of money will bring the level of hygiene that we want to see in the country in, in to, 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 to the extent of making sure that all the diseases that are related to hygiene are eliminated. No amount of money, even if we got trillions and trillions of money. I think what we need to get back and step back and say, where did we go wrong? It is the mindset, this mindset of not nurturing cleanliness as part of the culture. I remember when we were young, even at school, they would come and inspect, look at the nails, look at the way you've dressed, the way you, you know, all those things. They were part of, part of the culture of cleanliness. The health inspectors coming to homes and checking sure that everything at home is clean, they have a clean environment, they have latrines. Now, the peop those health inspectors are there. Those cutters are there. But why do you think right now we have a lot of rubbish, we have a lot of sanitation issues? Because the mindset of our people, and not only just the, the health inspectors or the people in government who are charged with this function, but everyone, we, we, we have completely abdicated this duty to government. That's why people are eating in town, they throw rubbish. Government to yambe. Now that 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 has a problem in itself. Because we have as individuals, as citizens of this country, we have the sole mandate to make sure that ourselves, even our bodies, our environment, our facilities, our institutions are clean. That way, collectively, in the society, we'll bring that culture back. It is not going to change if individually we are not, we are not putting what, what I call bylaws because let me tell you, and I, I must be frank on this one. When God created man, he knew that he would sin. But he had to put the confines. You do this, there is a repercussion. You, you don't do this, there is a repercussion. This one, you bla you'll be blessed. This one, you'll be cursed. That's how it is. Even in our society, we must have laws that govern how, how we behave. But we cannot say, you know, for me, I can throw things the way you want and it is okay. I, I cause the flies to, to, to be all over the place. Uh, the flies take whatever germs to the food and then people fall sick. 
people go and start cooking on miara uh, you know sewage is passing here someone is cooking here and it is okay that is that can we cannot continue like that there must be the do's and don'ts that govern our behavior to keep our environment clean to make sure that we stay in an environment that is safe safe from diseases public health act now that we have revised gives us now powers gives the re the people who are concerned nema minister of health local government all those people who are charged by different um, mandates to actually punish and penalize people who are doing these things and so we need to go back to enforcement why are we not enforcing when we have all these laws in our country so we need really to that issue we can talk until cows come home we can do whatever we do if we do not talk about the mindset of all of us to make sure that we take responsibility personal responsibility to make sure that the environment is clean it will just we shall just talk even now and and finish and and that's it okay mm. madam permanent secretary mm. the issue of uh, mindset change and the ability for people to be very vigilant especially mm. when it comes to the uh, conditions that are within the environment is a tricky one local ordinances is the role of local governments mm. we are hoping that your message can resonate mm. uh, through local government so that there is uh, ability to roll out some of mm. the enforcement measures mm. that could help address uh, this uh, particular concern. Allow me transition right now to tuberculosis screening and treatment. I said earlier, as we were starting this segment, about the burden of disease mm. in this country and how tuberculosis is a giant. Yeah. alongside HIV AIDS and malaria as you are here talked about. First and foremost, how are we with regard to screening and treatment and how is that playing into the overall strategy for HIV AIDS because at some point you find that those who are grappling with HIV or have mm -hmm. the HIV virus tend to be susceptible to tuberculosis. That doesn't mean that tuberculosis is not prevalent on its own. Mm. So it's a case of a, a balanced rollout of initiatives aimed at addressing one, but also curtailing the other. Yeah, uh, it is very true what you are saying. HIV is associated with tuberculosis. But also tuberculosis can exist on its own when even someone does not have TB because even before HIV, TB was yeah, there. But TB is very an interesting disease. I can be very, I can look very normal the way I am here mm -hmm. with no cough, with nothing when I have TB. Especially wow. if my system is very efficient to just to keep it in check so that the symptoms don't flare. I can have TB. When you look at right now, that's our statistics. We are losing 30 people per day due to TB. Tuberculosis still exists. And Uganda is one of those countries that have, has high burden of disease of TB. T t tuberculosis is a disease that can be prevented, it can be cured. Even, even in the face of malt drug resistance TB, tuberculosis can be cured because we have treatment for malt drug resistance. But we don't want to go to even mild drug resistance because to treat mild drug resistant, resistant TB in one person, you will have treated the cost is like uh, equivalent possibly of five uh, people to, you know, one mild drug resistant, the, the cost of the medicine. That's right. But 
of recent we made sure that we we increase our campaign in the communities in the screening of uh, especially where people are gathering you saw i think when if you went to namugongo you saw people were screening uh, for tb we have been going to markets you know where people gather in parks and we've been treating and and actually we've been screening and and surprisingly we have been able to get quite a number of people with tb yet they are working they are normal they are, some are working in restaurants, are, 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 they are working in the bars, but they have TB, they come and talk to you, they, they associate with you, they are in those who and continue to spread tuberculosis. So we continue, and, and we want really to, to thank the partners that have been supporting us on this, to scale up our screening. Uh, we have been also working with... Um, with uh, the cultural leaders that have mobilized people f to, to come for screening. And this, we, ha we have seen that it has yielded um, much, much more. And we continue to encourage many people. Whenever we come to where, where you are, our vans, our screening vans come. We have x-ray there, we, we have the, the, the testing machines there. So we take the, 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 the x-ray, we do the sample, and you are able to know there and then. And the information we get really is confidential. Some people are saying, no, I don't want, what if they tell me now that I'm, I'm, I have TB, what, would that, what will I do? No. <laughs> when we, especially men, TB largely is a disease of men. But men, Why is that so? Men don't want to go for care. Women, when they get any slight thing, they go for treatment. Men, it is a hassle. Men, you are, you are part of the problem on, on, on HIV spread. You, you are spreading TB. You are standing in the way of your women to go for antenatal. So men, we need to have a separate talk with men. Wow, so, that is interesting. Speak to them directly. Yes, men. I just want to remind you that together with you, we can defeat all these diseases, including HIV, tuberculosis. We need to encourage our mothers to go for family planning. Some, family pl some mothers have to hide to come for family planning. We need to see men come with your wives for antenatal, encourage your women to come for antenatal. So it, it is, I am diverting away from TB, but I want to tell you that the majority of people who have TB are men. And they are the ones that are spreading tuberculosis. HIV, of course the, the, the big number are in women, but who are spreading? <laughs> Someone will say. <laughs> What about <laughs> women and okay. they spreading? Just let that point be clear. <laughs> Prevalence rates are different from the spread patterns. Yes. Okay. Yes. They are more they are more in women because mm. women are more vulnerable, especially the young girls. You find someone has like five women and, and is sick and has spread. Of course, the question would be, what about women also, and they spread? Definitely, they are spreading. But we are seeing more vulnerability in women, and the disease is, is, is we are going to defeat HIV only if men come on board and be active and go for screening. That's why now when we go to th these communities, we really try to target men. Because men don't come for, for care, don't come for checkup. So we really want to encourage as many men to come whenever our trucks come for screening. Please endeavor to go there. You may not have any symptom, you may be healthy, but it is good to know your status. Know your status. Yes, because okay. we, we, uh, when we talk about um, tuberculosis, we are basically talking about. Um, getting disease like if i sit here with you and i cough and and we're in, conf in confinement every day the small dose you get from me cumulatively you can get the disease 
some travel in buses for long distance the windows are closed someone is there is coughing that's how people get disease so you never know where you could have gotten TB so we encourage as many people TB is curable it is curable once you get diagnosed and it is confirmed that you have TB and you start your medicine even now it is much simpler because the medicines are fewer and you take it for a shorter period before it used to be eight months then six months now it is at four months so it is it is, it is it, tuberculosis is can be cured all right mm. now mainstream hiv aids and the prevention i'm afraid when we tackle hiv aids we cannot avoid the political question of the day legislation that has seen the assent to the controversial anti-homosexuality bill now mm. effectively act and if the constitutional court does state it it will become effectively law the repercussions are grave and it has so many ugandans who are now afraid especially when it comes to access to life-saving drugs that are a result of the funding that comes mm. from the donor countries and when we hear the president of the united states joe biden saying uganda must rethink this particular uh, piece of legislation in order for the money that has been coming to help those who are suffering with mm -hmm. hiv aids and need these life-saving drugs mm -hmm. and then we begin to fear for them what is the plan by the ministry of health okay now um first of all historically Uganda has remained a very key partner with the, with the US uh, because uh, uh, let me start with that and this has been as we have been a st strategic partner with US because of so many things that 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 bind us together security disease prevention you know medical research training we we worked very very well and and I don't think this will change, even with the law. Now, coming to HIV, historically, Uganda has done so well. And it has been the example to the world. When the president declared war on HIV and started the campaign and saw us reduce HIV from 30% to now 5.5%, with ABC model, which is synonymous with Uganda. The effort that has been put in HIV prevention and care in Uganda cannot be matched. And this is not going to change. This is not going to change. And we know, of course, that quite a number of people who have been affected by HIV are also the 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 homosexuals and they have been accessing care they have been accessing care they continue to access care even as i talk now people come to our facilities continue get their medications continue getting be continue to be treated ministry of health is 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 we are bound by our 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 policy our values when i'm practicing medicine in the hospital there is one principle that guides my practice do not cause harm so nobody can be denied care because of who they are i can actually treat i have ever treated an ADF rebel who came short in Mbarara and I treated. After treating, then they came and took him, but we had to first treat. That's right. So for us, it is, it is not, it's, it's, the law is, is, it has its own aspects of prevent, preventing, promotion and all those things. But when it comes to a human being who comes with a disease, in our hospital we look at him as a human being 
we don't look at the other aspects. We treat the person who has come with illness because it is in our interest that we reduce the burden of disease in the community. If someone comes with HIV and is denied care, then we are not responding to what the president is telling us and what we, we signed up for to make sure that we reduce HIV in the community. So our main goal, our main emphasis is that people who are affected, people who, have, who are sick, should continue coming to our hospitals. Because anyone, to us, nobody special more than the other. Everyone matters, regardless of, of, of what issues they have. When they come to us, we don't go into the history of what, who are you, what, are you gay or what? no. We treat as you are. If you come with complications, if you come with a disease, we treat you, we do tests, we give you medicine, we counsel you for adherence, we follow up and make sure that we, what we want is for you to get treated and not spread this disease to any other person. That is right. And also Atwine, live. Dr. Atwine, mm. the aspect of uh, administration of service mm. to any person, that is well understood. Yes. The fear right now is mm. availability of drugs and for millions who have been depending on uh, uh, programs including PEFA by mm. the US government mm. where the grants that have been extended to Uganda are able to mm. provide these drugs to them. What's the plan right now in case, and this is a question that is attendant to the fact that we still have to wait for the court to decide on that matter. In case the court says, the law stays, and then the United States and other Western powers go ahead with their threat to I think I would not really want to be, should I call it a s speculate, speculative, mm -hmm. but I know that we, we have continued to work with uh, our partners. Mm -hmm. Even now, we, w we work together, we work very well with partners, and they have been supportive. And I think our we just want to give the assurance our partners that the law, if the law stands, it will do its work, or it will do what it has been set to do. However, when it comes to care, everyone matters to us. Everyone will be treated with dignity, with respect, and like any other person. Now, on, treat, on, on what will happen to on treatment, I, 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 w I cannot really talk for what is going to happen in court or what, is, what the partners are going to do. But I think we shall get, we shall cross the bridge. We shall get to the bridge and cross it when, together. We shall come back and tell you what has happened and what we have done. But for sure, government is committed to take care of its citizens. Her citizen is the biggest resource. So I don't think the government will abdicate duties of not caring, even in the shortage. And I think the president mentioned it, that in case that happens, government must find resources to take care of, of her people. Okay. But I do, I do believe that is the extreme, which I don't believe that it will happen because we, 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 we are talking with the, the partners and, 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 and I do believe they know. They have been here, they know how we treat our people. They, we, although some of those sentimental things of, you know, human race, some people, I know that for them to gain acceptability somewhere where they've gone, they must portray That's that. A very convenient. Yes, uh, because they must portray themselves as that they are, uh, you know, as they are threatened, and you know those things that happen. Or especially if they want to go for asylum, if they want to to get somewhere, sometimes they use these things. But people who have been here, you know, between me and you, 
we have we have not we have not uh, no, we have not there's seen no that yeah th there is no discrimination nature. yeah okay mm. now that's a topic that of course is uh, developing i would love to delve slightly into the aspect of access to healthcare services away from access to life saving uh, hiv drugs mm. there are concerns among some ugandans that the rollout of health centers across the country is commendable, but these are mainly structures where there is a lack of personnel, there is a lack of critical equipment that is needed, there is also a lack of medicines and drugs mm -hmm. to the extent that cases you would find in health center twos and threes and fours are packed in regional referral hospitals and such reality, mm -hmm. cases that can be managed even in a clinic mm -hmm. are found in Monaco National Referral Hospital. Mm. Yeah, it is. It is true that, um, of course, as we roll out, the resource envelope may not match all the needs. The NRM manifesto clearly states and the aim was to make sure that every constituency has a health center for. A health center for is now in our new structure is called community hospital. Okay. Every sub county is supposed to have a health center three. Four years ago there were only 380 sub-counties that did not have Health Center 3. We planned through uh, with, with finance and, and partners to start scaling up and upgrading Health Center tools that were in those sub-counties. But over time, more districts have been created and more sub-counties. Right now, I think I have 800 sub counties we have rolled out we have built health center threes in quite a number of health center and sub counties the health those health centers i know that what you are talking about is that when we built we had not hired the staff and equipped the good news is that currently all those health center threes are being equipped. They have been equipped and the districts are actually recruiting new staff for those health center threes. Good enough, uh, this year we got approval of our new structure by public service. Our new structure actually allows us even to deploy health center at health center three is the doctors, meaning the services are going to get even more. We are going to get more services at health center three than before. The, host, the health center fours in constituencies now are going to be community hospitals. The community hospitals, we are going to have more doctors than just the two that we've been having because the population has increased. The services are increasing. So, yes, I can say that Rome was not built in one, one day. <laughs> and the will, the plan, the strategies, all are looking at making sure that step by step, step by step, we make sure that we improve infrastructure, we equip them, and we make sure that we post the, the people in those facilities. Now, not only just posting the health workers there, when we enhanced our, our, the, the pay to our human resource, the question has been, has the performance improved? We are assessing that but not only that, we are coming up with 
the tool to assess the performance of our teams in our hospitals and in our facilities. We are redefining each one's role so that when they are being appraised, they are going to focus on their output. So that way, it want to see now performance management improve. It's not just enough to talk about remuneration, but it is also important to talk about responsibility. It's not enough just to talk about welfare of the, the, the medical team. We also need to talk about their core work output. So the two must go hand in hand. We cannot talk about one and we leave the other. So we are really focusing on performance management and, and we hope that we'll, we'll get together with public service and, and uh, service commissions to make sure that and that the local governments to, to fine tune the, 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 performance, the performance management um, document so that it guides the accounting officers in the, in the district that cow to, to assess the performance and also sanction where people are not working. Okay, mm. Madam Permanent Secretary, many thanks for clarification, update mm. and uh, confidence building, yes. especially when it comes to the variety of interventions that uh, are going on especially with regard to the health challenges that we have at the time. We shall go for another break and uh, when we return, we shall effectively wrap this uh, discussion up just with us. Okay. Welcome back. We're glad you're still with us on a special program where we are looking at uh, the state of health and the various interventions that have been undertaken by the government, of course, uh, led by the Ministry of Health in assuring that Ugandans across the whole country are accessing the services they need and are also part of the improvements in health care administration. We are speaking to the Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Health, Dr. Diana Atrine. Before we went into the break, we had broken down the HIV AIDS question. We are now transitioning into one of the diseases that are less understood but very much prevalent, yellow fever. Dr. Dana Atrina, yellow fever is one that for those that are 30 and above, very much aware because they studied and uh, were told it's uh, one that they should guard against. However, as time has gone on, I don't know whether it's the case of the prevalence of far more uh, prevalent diseases, as in diseases that show that people have completely ignored the signs or the aspects of life that make them vulnerable to this particular disease. You know best. Mm -hmm. Give us an update on what exactly is being done. At the moment we are doing the vaccination campaign uh, in 51 districts. We launched that uh, vaccination launch on 8th of this month. We are going to do this campaign in three phases. The first one, we now we concluded the, the 51, but we are also going to the second phase when we'll cover some districts and then the third phase. We are doing that because we didn't have sufficient vaccines in the country. These are vaccines that are manufactured, but they are, they are not on large scale. But we, we, to, to, we the, the government of Uganda and um, the Derecho decided that the countries that keep on getting sporadic outbreaks should have the population covered um, by v vaccination. The, the, the beauty about this vaccination is just a one dose, one time, one lifetime. The targeted population that we are vaccinating, we start at nine months up to 60 days. 
why nine months? Nine months, we do that because the younger children, their immunity has not developed. They are, they are prone to more um, side effects. The older people above 60, they are not able to make, they are also the immunity has started going down, but also they don't mount um, effective immune response to, to prepare the, 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 the body. So we, we, we targeted that population, but also because of the limitation of the vaccines that we have, we knew that this is the, the largest cohort of the, the, the people that, that we have. So nine months to 60 years. Now, the, this, 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 this um, yellow fever is, is spread by the mosquito. One type of a mosquito called Aedes. This mosquito bites actually during the day. If you see, if you ever see a mosquito that has stripes on the legs, have you ever seen it? <laughs> it has a white, uh, you know, gray, gray oh. stripes on the, legs. Stripes on the legs. Yeah, if you, if you need to start picking interest, How you know. How many times do I even look at a mosquito? No, if the mosquito comes, maybe you are somewhere country and you uh -huh. you are in the garden or maybe unless you do never go to the garden the Aedes mosquitoes will come out of the bush and uh -huh. they will bite you during that day wow. those mosquitoes if you are unlucky and you are bitten by a mosquito that has yellow fever it will give you that yellow fever is that the mainstream pattern of transmission yeah but also other animals you can pick uh, because still still you, you Still, those mosquitoes you know bite those animals. Then the animal can can spread also because it is a viral infection. So you can easily get it even from from animals. So although it is not very common, but we have had sporadic outbreaks. The latest one was in Nebi. I even Buyukwe here in Mukono, we had a sporadic outbreak. Western Nile in, in Karamoja. So that's why we decided to, to roll out the, these vaccines. Yellow, yellow fever kills. It doesn't have definitive treatment. You just give supportive treatment. Why is it so? Hmm? Why is it so? By the way, the majority of the virus, viral infections, don't have particular treatment. You give supportive, even COVID, does it have treatment? No. You support your uh, measles, does it have treatment? No. You support, you, you, you give supportive treatment. So it's not like malaria that you take the dose and it kills the, 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 the protozoa in the body and then that's it, yeah. So that's why we believe that prevention is better than cure. The vaccination is now, yellow fever has joined the 13 other 13 diseases that we are now vaccinating routinely. So yellow fever is going to be now routine. That is across all age groups? Yeah, all age groups from nine, nine months. But those that have received, you know, there are people who get vaccinated or who are staying in those districts where we got outbreaks and they were vaccinated, you don't need to get another dose. It's just one dose in a lifetime. Um, it has, of course, a few side effects, like any other vaccine, fever, pain, but it can be, you know, manageable. We don't encourage people who are pregnant to go for that vaccine because it, it, can, it can give you uh, the, the side effect of that baby. We don't encourage if you have very severe immune suppression, like you've been on cancer drugs, your immunity is very, very low, or you have severe HIV, we don't encourage you to go for that vaccine. Okay. You spoke about prevalence of uh, mm. yellow fever in Navy. Mm. Uh, of course, you've also highlighted the various regions. 
we're looking at what I would describe as uh, a map of mm. prevalence of disease. Mm. Would you, for example, say there is a region that is particularly vulnerable and there is a set list of factors that are identifiable to be causing the high prevalence? No, it is not really. Uh, but we know that um, the districts that are bordering South Sudan and Congo, because it's been Congo, they had quite a, a big outbreak there some, some years ago. So, and, and you know, yellow fever, you can spread it across the border. Someone can come from another neighboring country and come. So it's not really, it is not defined by, by the region or, because like now the, that outbreak in Buyukwe that took place, I think most likely it was brought by a traveler. So it is not it is not geographically defined that it is, this is a prone because this these are sporadic. They can come from in anywhere. So that's why we want the whole country to be covered. If if it was like uh, cholera, there are certain districts that were prone to cholera that we had to go and vaccinate specific we did to vaccinate the entire country because those are those are districts that where we have been seeing cholera you know come back and come back and come back so that th those are the, the that's the approach but for yellow fever no all right so that means mm -hmm. ideally everyone should be vaccinated yes and that brings into question the aspect of what the yellow fever gel uh, one that normally people are asked to get before they travel out of the country. Mm. Your advice right now, I presume, is that people should get this vaccine before you need to travel out of the country. Yeah, um, it is a, a, a prerequisite. But what has been happening, uh, people, you know Ugandans like shortcuts. They really like uh, to reap where they have not sown. Mm. They just go and buy cards when even they have not been vaccinated. But now the beauty is that these vaccines are free. You don't have to go to the clinic to pay 150,000 to be vaccinated. These vaccines are free. And once you get vaccinated, we will give you the card. And in case you are going to travel, you present that card to any of the facilities that we gave those special cards for travel. You present it. They, they, you show that you've been vaccinated, and they will issue you that vaccine without additional charges. I'm hoping uh, the fact that many can circumvent the system and mm. uh, get this card without necessarily taking the jab is not again presenting the nation another problem of prevalence <laughs> of the disease, mm. and the health experts don't know. No, we, we, we the the bit is that really yellow fever is not a recurrent is not a, a very okay. predominant disease mm. but we encourage that instead of people taking shortcut really there is here a free free dose why again to go and forge the, the card why the, the the vaccine is there for free all right and the card will be given to you at no cost so why why do you have to go and pay you know um extra money to to get the card mm. Okay, Doctor, allow me transition now into what is described as the emergency medical services strategy across the country. Mm. When I hear the word emergency, my thinking quickly runs to something as simple as availability of an ambulance. Mm. If somebody has a condition and they're, in, they're really critical, how fast they reach the nearest center and by which means. Perhaps you introduce us to the strategy as it is, but also how effectively it's being embraced across the country. Yeah, it is true that um, two years ago, two or three years ago, we, 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 we finalized the, our, our, our emergency medicine strategy, and this strategy is looking at improving our care, both at the scene and the scene I'm talking about in case of accident right. or in a home, in case of a woman who, who has had 
you know, obstructed labor, whatever. So at scene, to manage, to build capacity to manage at scene, to build capacity, so the, the, there we call it pre-hospital. And pre-hospital is all the way from the scene during transportation up to the hospital. When you get to hospital, then you have hospital emergency. So the other one is pre-hospital and this one is hospital. Pre-hospital, we have had three components that we really we are focusing on right now. The first one is to train first responders. Every country, every country that, that does not have pre-hospital teams that are capable, and then you lose many people in the community because some of, some of the interventions are simple, yet they, they are life-changing. You, you can change any, any slight miss, That's right. you can lose a life. So pre-hospital um, training, we are talking about training our first responders in the communities. And we have been doing that for quite some time. We have not reached the number we want, but we want to see every village, every parish, every sub-county to have a cohort of pre-hospital teams that are first responders for anything that strikes in that place. People are equipped, people know what to do, not to come and rob, because that's what is happening. Yeah, it usually happens a lot. Mm, we uh, have more robbers. Victims are robbed of their items. Yeah, we have more robbers than the responders. So we want to change that narrative. Mm. So, but also during transportation, then we'll need ambulances. Mm. We need capacity to move people from there, there, where they, wherever they are, their home, their scene of accident, to move them to the hospital. You need equipment in the hospital, in, in, in the ambulance. You resuscitate if someone is, is, is hypoxic, you administer oxygen. If someone hypovolemic, you administer vo uh, the, the IV fluids. If someone has difficulty in breathing, you, 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 you clear airway, you, you support the breathing. You, if someone has multiple fracture, you put the splint, you move. If someone is bleeding, you, 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 you stop the, so that as you are transporting this patient from wherever they, they got this problem to where you are taking them, some interventions is done. Our, our statistics show that we are losing many people because that pre-hospital component was not strengthened. Two questions on that. Okay. Just two weeks ago, the Uganda Red Cross and the Red Crescent, of course working under the aegis of the uh, International Red Cross, outed the Global Disaster Report mm. for the year 2022. And in it, the Red Cross outlines a series of measures that it rolls out to be able to respond effectively to disaster, especially mm. when it happens to far flat areas where governments cannot or are constrained to reach. Mm. Yeah. That meant that the Red Cross and the Red Crescent are integral to emergency response. Yes. I do not know whether the Ministry of Health is working closely with the Red Cross, which says it has a team of uh, local responders mm. who update the top officials of whatever is happening in a community on a daily basis. Mm. This is a surveillance mechanism that can be adopted. I might be asking, but when you're actually on it, if you're not, why aren't you? Actually, um, Red Cross is our partner. We, we work with them. That's right. We have a memorandum of understanding that clearly defines their roles and our roles. We fund Red Cross, government funds Red Cross to do those, those, those operations. So, so they have been not only just uh, responding 
in the disaster places like uh, like uh, Bulambuli recently or Chisoro. But they have been also working with us even in epidemics, even in, in, in uh, COVID, in uh, Ebola, we are working with them, we are supporting them and, and, and work actually as a team. Uh, even when it comes to training some of those people they are using, even our pre-hospital, we, we work together to, to, to train. Um, even they, they have been helping us to work with blood bank to mobilize uh, for blood. So, so they, 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 they are part of us, they, they, they work with us, so, so they, they are not like on, on the side, they, they work with us, they are they're part of the stakeholders we work with. So, on, 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 so I was still telling you, so after that, after pre-hospital, then now we, we also define what should be at the hospital. If you have been keen enough, most of the recent hospitals that we have constructed, we have made, we have made sure that accident and emergency department is added. In our structure, now in a new structure, we didn't have the, those cadres. Now we have emergency medicine physicians. They are coming up. We are working on, on a strategy to, uh, uh, not strategy, but, but we, are, we are expanding our policy and our strategy to to start also looking at air, air rescue. So, so we want to that whole continuum of care. We we have also we are establishing the call center, the, the, the different call centers, because call centers give you are able to see when a woman is obstructed. Because one of the reasons why we have been having challenges of our mothers coming late. They did not have that, that connectivity with our emergency teams to call. So if we have these, uh, our, our, our call centers operational, someone is just able to call a 9912 or something, the code I've forgotten, but we are working on the code. Then someone on the call center is able to tell which ambulance is near that person who has called. Because ambulances, we, we, we are aiming at making, making sure that they are all tracked. We put uh, GPS so that if I'm on the screen, I'm just able to see which, which, amb which ambulance is near who, who, the person who has called me and I instruct they, they move there. And, and that's why we are moving away from putting ambulance on health facilities, health facilities, because they don't have the budget to, to maintain, as you know, the ambulances before they would be in the, in the facility, or one tire or something gets wrong, and the ambulance would be grounded forever. We don't want to do that. So that these ambulances are now managed under our, our medical, uh, you, you know, um, emergency medical service. Mm. All right. Look, uh, sounds more like. Uh, and and also now we ha we have we have prov provided also for the water, uh, for the districts in the in the in the islands, because they had also challenges of transporting people, although that still it is a challenge, because it is very costly. Those those ambulances take a lot of fuel from Kalangala to Entebbe. That's two hundred liters. So you find that they are they are, they, are, they are struggling with a budget. We we don't have sufficient sufficient resources to be respond to everyone but at least the boats are there the the, the ambulances are there oh, interesting mm. there to mm. hear a progress on uh, water yeah. ambulance and how it is working uh, mm. dr atwine time is not her best ally we shall be now transitioning into the very last uh, a question of uh, this interview the community health extension worker strategy you hinted on it earlier but it was a support a factor for mm. another point. Mm. We now have to delve into it mainstream. Mm. This includes uh, village health teams, right? And uh, how mm. best they intervene. They could be one of the first responders, and that is uh, clearly related to mm. emergency response. Yeah. But this, or oh, the initiative has worked on its own before. It has had tremendous success, but challenges still are registered, especially when it comes to knowledgeability of the 
women who conduct the VHG services. Has this been addressed? We, we came up with that strategy long before even PDM mm. wa came to be. We came up with that strategy. We wanted to place two community extension workers at parish level. They are trained. They act like health center one. Now, these people would go and move house to house, educate people, give you no know, information, uh, make sure that w all the things I was talking about to screen, to, to encourage people for antenatal, document all the issues, train them on, on the hygiene, malaria, vaccination, all those. To make sure that really at household level, we see more health interventions. We're not able to roll out because it, were, it required 38 billion to pay their monthly salary for a year. 38 billion. 38. But 38 billion, if you look at the benefit, if you got household le level, you screen and you prevent complications of hypertension. Alone hypertension, let me say just hypertension, or non-communicable diseases. You screen for, for, for diabetes. You teach people how to diet so that they avoid complications. Because when these people come to us with complications of diabetes and hypertension, it is extremely very difficult to treat. People in Heart Institute, when people, they come with heart failure, because of hypertension, because of diabetes, when they come with kidney failure, because of hypertension and diabetes, we we require we treat per person. You don't pay spend less than five five million. That's the minimum one can spend on one person. So, if you go down and you prevent these issues at household. There is an economic benefit, an economic gain. The money you prevent from being spent to buy medicines because of so many people falling sick is much, much more than 38 billion that we needed just to pay those people. So, of course, we took our, 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 our our um, strategy to to cabinet, they were saying no, they didn't have the money, and we use the existing framework of village health teams. Village health teams are volunteers. They have been working. We've been supporting them. Every program we work with them, we facilitate them. We give them things to use, gum boots, whatever, whatever. But because they are volunteers. We don't demand so much output from them because they are volunteering. A volunteer has a limitation. So if really we want to reverse and we reduce the congestion of people coming to our facilities sick, if we want to change that narrative, and we see more productive population at community level. We see more health population at community level. We spend less money buying, you know, sp putting so much, so many billions of shillings to buy medicines. We reduce the congestion of the sick people at facility level. The only way to do it, we must strengthen that community. Now that is something that we want to continue talking about. Now we are very excited when PDM came because PDM was also talking about at, to implement at parish level, which we had already discussed earlier and somehow it was not embraced at that time. But we do believe that now with PDM, if we want to functionalize the social service component of PDM, we have to do our community health strategy. At, 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 at community level. 
and so we we now we are in, in discussion we are we have revived this but we are working also with partners who have been supporting us some districts because we had to pilot to to, to get statistics to bring to policy makers and say the benefit of investing in the community cannot be overemphasized. Look at the benefits. Look at how now antenatal care has improved. See how maternal mortality and neonatal deaths have, have declined because of earlier you know, attendance. At, at, at look, look at how sanitation and hygiene related diseases have declined because now whole household know what to do they have latrine they are they they are being you know they have been educated look at the the landscape of disease prevention in children like immunization you know the, 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 the so all that will definitely change our health statistics but that will require still us continuously talk until people appreciate that because not everyone will really understand this they are, they are looking at the money we are spending to pay, but they are not looking at the money we are saving this side um, as, as a result of, of, of a healthy population. Okay. Mm. Uh, perhaps that is something we shall not uh, necessarily blame them because many would be expecting the government mm. to do a lot in terms of uh, ensuring that everything works and all the dots are connected pretty well. Allow me just smuggling something about health insurance. There are proponents of health insurance across this country who mm. are dismayed that government has been deliberately slow in efforts to roll out a comprehensive health insurance scheme. One that is going to solve once and for all the questions of the cost of health care in Uganda. Right now as I speak, the average Ugandan, including a corporate and those that are sitting in uh, local government offices, the average Ugandan is one hospital bill away from brokenness. And that is a very damning assessment of the situation. I don't know where the discussion is on health insurance mm. or even whether there is a blueprint, a blueprint for example, from countries that have rolled it out that Uganda can effectively copy. It is not true, actually, that g government has delayed mm. deliberately. You know, our, our country, uh, the, the strength it has is all embracing. In some countries, it is it, it was someone's word and it becomes law and the following date is implemented and you, know, you don't question. But here, you must, you must ask everyone to contribute to this idea. The consultative process took long. Even I found that pro consultative process ongoing. Now, that was not enough just to say consultative process. But also, we, the people had to do benchmarking. That process was done. The bill was made, discussed in Parliament, but when it reached the, the level of signing by the President, the President had a complaint from the private sector that they did not, they, they did not like the way the bill was drafted. No, so the bill was sent back to us and said, Ma, you must consult or the private sector. That was a daunting task to get everyone to consent until we you had to remove the clause. You would not expect the private sector to consent. To they did not that consent. Is going to effectively get them or clients off their. So lists. we had to remove some of the clauses, mm. prepared the document. While we are pre pre preparing now to go back to cabinet, insurance regulatory authority says no, your bill is creating another structure of regulator, yet we are here, why are you ignoring us? So right now this bill 
is the office the office of attorney general is handling that that issue to harmonize so that the regulatory authority insurance regulatory authority is harmonizing the the position with the attorney general so once that that is done we'll be ready to go so really it's not true we want we want this law like five years ago. Okay. We really, really, we want this law because once we have insurance, we will see um, catastrophic expenditure by the public go down. But also we'll have a basket that will contribute to, that it will improve on the health financing. So, so it's not really true that we, we government, we are so eager, but we have so many ob obstacles to overcome. All right. Mm. Dr. Diana Atwini, many thanks for enlightening the nation on the state of affairs in the healthcare sector and what the Ministry of Health on behalf of the government mm. is undertaking to improve our new conditions and therein. That has been the Permanent Secretary of the Ministry of Health, Dr. Diana Atwine, and of course this broadcast, special in nature, comes to enlighten you on what is happening in terms of the initiatives that are being undertaken by the government to improve health care across the country. It's been a pleasure having your company. I'm Chris Higeni. Have yourselves a lovely day.